In this video, we're going to talk about chemical formulas and names from individual ions. First things first, let's talk about neutral compounds. How do we make a, a compound neutral? Well, what you have is a sodium and a chloride ion. Your sodium has a positive charge and your chloride has a negative charge. Because they are positive and negative, we do understand that there is one in front of that positive and negative. You do not have to write the one. It is understood. But because those two cancel out, you're, ended up, you're ending up with an NaCl. So another one that I wanted to show you is we have a calcium, which is a positive two, and a sulfur, which is a negative two. Okay, so that positive two and that negative two cancel each other out. And what are we left with? CAS. Okay, and then the last one I wanted to show you, because these charges do come, one, two, and three, is we have an aluminum that has a positive three charge and a nitrogen that has a negative three charge. And we know that these, the three, the positive three and the negative three cancel each other out. And so what we're left with is ALN. Okay, so compounds are named from the individual ions they come from. So you're going to name the cation and the anion ion from the from each name and combine them very very simple so what do we have here we have a sodium ion we have a chloride ion if we go ahead and just get rid of the word ion we end up with an NaCl which is a sodium chloride now if we do one more we have an iron three ion and then we have a nitrate ion and if we combine those two remove the word ion we have an iron three nitrate now in the iron three nitrate right here we have a roman numeral this is called our stock system this is used when a element can form um, a variable charge or a multiple charge you might hear both of those in your lecture and your lab and, and it means the same thing they're variable or they're multiple charges um, and if you're confused about that, there is a video on multiple charges. Maybe you should go check that out in the video library. Um, but I just wanted to give you a quick rundown of that. So we can write the ion name from a given chemical formula. So basically, we're just going to work backwards, okay? We've been given this formula. It is potassium carbonate, K2CO3, potassium carbonate. If I take the potassium carbonate and I break it down, I have a potassium ion, and then uh, that's just going to give me my K with a positive charge, okay? Then I have my carbonate ion, and that gives me my CO3 to negative charge. Now, carbonate is a polyatomic ion. You should be able to recognize that it's a polyatomic ion. However, if you don't, you can always look up um, something like that. If, you're, if you see something that is confusing or maybe you're not 100% sure if it's a polyatomic ion, check your polyatomic ion sheet. That's why we have them. If you haven't been handed one, maybe you have one in your lab that you want to look over, or you can go to the internet and you can find a more, um, I guess, broad one uh, polyatomic ion sheet, you should be able to find that. So let's just do one more. We have Ag2S, which is silver sulfide. We're going to do the exact same thing. We have a silver ion, okay? And then that's our Ag with our positive charge. And then we have a sulfide ion, and what that is, excuse me, is the S2 negative. Now, I have italicized the IDE, because we did talk about that, um, and we will get further into the IDE, and how we know that it's an IDE, because we know that S is a sulfur, right? But it's got a charge on it, and so your charge is what signifies that we're going to change that uh, suffix to IDE. There are videos on that, so if you're a little confused, you can ask your instructor. You can go over to your video library and see if you can find it in there. So, if we're given the chemical formula, we're going to name the compound. So, when a metal cation, remember, cation is positive, it loses electrons, it's positive. The T in the cation reminds me that it is a positive. But uh, when the metal cation forms only one charge, okay, so... Here, what do we have? We have a BA. We're going to start really simple with a BA. If you look on your periodic table, your BA is a positive 2 charge. It only forms a positive 2 
charge. Okay, it is barium, and that's what it reads on your periodic table. Well, let's go ahead and add our I, and our I is a negative charge. We have two of those, right? So it's going to be an iodide because it has a charge on it. And once we have all that put together, all we're going to do is we're, we're going to combine them. Barium iodide. We can do another one. Uh, what do we have here? We have our aluminum, which is a three. Okay. And then we're going to have add our hydroxide. Now this OH again is a polyatomic ion. If you're confused about polyatomic ions, you might want to find the video that is named Naming Mono and Polyatomic Ions. It should help explain that a little bit. So we have this hydroxide. We're just going to go ahead and combine them together. And what do we have? Aluminum hydroxide. Let's just do one more for fun. So on this one, I have zinc. Zinc is my Zn, and then I have my SO4 2 negative. If you've watched the video at all, you know that an SO4 2 negative is a polyatomic ion. And again, I'll say it again, it is a sulfate. You can go find it on your polyatomic ion sheet, or you can check out that video, naming mono and polyatomic ions. So if you have questions, those questions should be directed directly to your instructor. You can also pop over to your video library. You should be able to find videos that could answer other questions that might go along with some of these um, that you're working out in this particular section of the nomenclature lab. But I hope this video gives you a little bit of insight on how to name these uh, compounds if your metal cation only forms one charge.